I'm Dr. Gregory Asterson. I've been working with the highly endangered painted dog for 28 years. And I first started working with the dogs. No one knew anything about them. I was a young biologist and I thought I was going to do it for six months. And then I found out that here was a species that really needed our help. You know, they were being shot by ranchers, they were being caught by snares. And in fact, and, and, and they were you know, subject to persecution. And I felt I had a cause in life. And that's how I began 28 years ago as a young man working with this species. So, you know, when I started working with the dogs, you know, one of the, the first packs I ever studied was a pack where, where there was just one dog was killed by a snare, the alpha male, the lead male, and the whole pack died out. You know, it's a bit like a family where, you know, where you know, a parent gets killed. You know, of course, that's going to affect all the kids and the whole pack died out. And so snaring, you know, the snaring issue, which is the sad thing is snares are, are, a, um, are just a trap, like a noose, you know, they're, they're set to catch an animal, but they're not even set for the dogs, they're set for bushmeat. And the bushmeat's a business, you know, it's a little bit like salmon poachers that try and set nets across big rivers. And these snares are horrible, I mean, they're brutal, you know, they slowly do that and they tighten and then they close up and then they tighten, you know, it's a bit like a, you know, like a, like a cable tire or a zap strap that slowly strangles the animal. And they were causing untold damage. But even worse is that the painted dog is one of the most social carnivores. You know, talk about the three musketeers, you know, one for all, all for one. One dog gets caught in a snare like this. The whole pack tries to help him. And then what happens is I'm trying to help, you know, his, my buddy. And my buddy, there's a the snare next door and my buddy gets caught in the snare. And you'd have a whole pack of an endangered species. There's 3,000 left in the wild. And you know, you could have 10, 20 individuals all dead like that. Well, that's a percentage of a population. And then some years ago, by accident, one of the radio collars that I fitted on actually caught the snare by mistake and blocked the snare from strangling them. Because this obviously is set for the neck and you know, the animal gets strangled and it's a horrible, horrible death. And, and one of the dogs got caught and the, the radio collar accidentally saved the dog and I said maybe we can design a collar that can um, protect the dogs against these snares. Anyway I went on this quest and I, I kind of played around with different ideas but I realized that I needed more players and partners and, and, um, and I then decided I wanted to design a collar that um, could really protect the dogs against snares. So in my head, I designed a collar. But you know, to put things out on animals in the wild, there's more than, it's not just, oh, I want a collar and I want some belting and I want this and I want that to make a collar. You know, wild animals, you have to almost like tailor make a, a collar to the animal. You know, it's not just like, oh, any old pair of shoes will fit. You know, they all look different now. Anyway, so I came up with this idea and by working with other partners, um, Painted Dog Protection Initiative and, and working dogs, um, a working dog group in Orlando, Joel Slavin's working dog group. I came up with an idea that we could design a collar that would protect the dogs against snares and you know, protect them against them getting you know, their necks cast and everything else. Well, it's great having an idea, but trying to put ideas sometimes into practice becomes nigh on impossible. So, and it went something like this. I was like, oh good, I'm gonna build this collar. Oh yes, I just need some belting, just belting for the collar. But this belting's gotta have special properties, it's gotta have this, it's gotta have that. And um, I'm not necessarily gonna produce the highest volume of collar. And I contacted, like, and I'm talking hundreds of belting manufacturers all over the world, all over the country, and I'm like, you know, onto the web form, Dear Belt Company X, Acme Belt Company, can you help? And I'd get either no answers or ridiculous answers. And then, and I'd try and explain very carefully, you know, what the problem was that we were trying to save an endangered species. And then one day, and actually this was, I'm not joking, this was my Christmas present. Just before Christmas, about two years ago, I got an email back from a company from Belt Service. Mario in Belt Service here in St. Louis, he emailed and said, hey, this sounds like a great project. And I'm like, am I 
reading, am I kind of smoking some mumbanji or something? Like this? And this is unreal. And he was excited about it. He said, no, he said, this is the funny. We, you know, we, I'm sure we can help. And I'm like, well, I need samples and this and that and the other. And I was afraid he was going to ask the magic question, you know, is this, um, you know, are you going to be turning over 10,000 collars a year? And, you know, which is what the answers I'd got from the others. And he's like, how can we help? And, uh, and, and I said, well, I said, we, can you send me some samples of belts? You know, all I was wanting was something that was going to fit the animal, that had all the characteristics, the properties, the feel, the this, the that. And he said, yeah, we can do that. And, and literally, between Christmas and New Year, I received this box of like, like 50 or 60 different belts. And I was there all night, like from 2 o'clock in the morning. I came back from a presentation and I'm like, 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock, I'm, I'm blind. I'm feeling I'm like, wow, this is like silk, you know, from my point of view for the dog, you know, and different ones. And I, and I can't belt service, became involved. And then the next thing I hear is, well, you know, can we meet? And already Armando from Belt Service St. Louis, he got involved. He said, no, I think this is a great project. You know, my daughter loves playing the dogs. And, you know, let's help, you know, let's give back. You know, because ultimately, let's face it, you know, conservation, nature does not have a voice. You know, my mum always used to say, you know, you know we, nature can't help itself. We've got to help it. And that's just one of those things. It's, and, and that's why I've got a, you know, a non-profit painted dog research trust to help protect painted dogs anywhere in the world and in the wild. And this relationship has just got better and better. And, and, and you know, of course, and then I went to see the company and I saw the amazing facilities. And I'm like, my jaw's hanging out. You know, I wanted to put all the belts in my pocket and take it home. And the guy said, you don't need to do that. You know, we'll tailor make, we'll help you with, you know, we can weld belts together. We can, and then we had an idea, well, we want to put solar panels on this. Yes, we can weld. You find the solar panel company. We'll weld their panels on, and and um, so then it took a new a new take, and um, it's been the most amazing relationship. You know, it's a partnership here in St. Louis, which actually has one of the you know one of the best zoos in the country. Um, has also got the painted dogs, and 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 it's just an amazing synergy, and even more excitingly, I mean. So how does this amazing collar work and who's involved? So here we've got an anti-snare collar. Now, I know it kind of doesn't really look, you know, like very fancy. I mean, I don't think I'm going to win any fashion competitions wearing it. But what it does is it protects the painted dog's neck from these snares. And if they, the neck's protected, they just break the wire and off they go like nothing's ever happened. It's a bit like you know, wearing a bulletproof vest for a painted dog if you go into a war zone. If I was to, someone says you go into a high war zone, you want a bulletproof vest, my answer is I don't care how heavy it is, I'm going to wear it. But I also want to say is that what's been so special about this relationship with St. Louis and, 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 and belt service in St. Louis is that, you know, they've helped us to make a belting that is like fits the animal perfectly in terms of comfort, in terms of Oh, is that too harsh for the animal? And they're talking about how they can, you know, change the weave a bit, the weft and the weave, make it so that the edges are smooth. And I'm like, this is the kind of detail that, that, that we don't understand. But of course, you know, other professionals in their field of speciality do. And, you know, the thought and this, for us, it's very special that, you know, here you've got, you know, companies that care about our environment, to me, those companies are very special.